Today, I want to talk about Nick Saban and the entire staff that he has had to replace. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk about Alabama coach Nick Saban who needs to replace 15 analysts and or assistants on his staff, and he's done the bulk of that. We got news here over the weekend that Carl Scott accepted a job with the Minnesota Vikings. Congratulations to him, but Carl Scott was also defensive backs coach at Alabama, which took me back to this place where I was like, how many of his assistants has Nick Saban lost? Now, many of you will also know this is a Nick Saban-friendly space. Even when I'm getting made fun of, because I thought that the man had lost a little bit of juice last April. And not only had he not lost any juice last April when Alabama's 21 recruiting classes ranked 55th in the country, he puts together, quite literally, the greatest recruiting class of all time in a very sincere uh, middle finger to yours truly. Not really. I'm making a joke there. But you get it, right? Because I doubted Nick Saban. And for the folks that doubted Nick Saban, it's becoming like doubting Tom Brady who won his seventh Super Bowl ring on Sunday night. It's become like doubting Tiger Woods, who went through hell and then some, and still managed to win another Masters after it was all said and done. It also walks out for me what is true of Alabama in a way that it is true nowhere else. Nick Saban is Alabama football. It doesn't matter who the personnel is. It doesn't matter who the coaching staff is made up of. He can survive this and thrive in it. Again, put together the best recruiting class of all time with everybody having to know that his staff was going to get poached once again, whether they won the national championship or not because of how they played through the month of December, winning the SEC championship game and making the college football playoff. Only adding to that, they dispatched Notre Dame with extreme prejudice and they destroy Ohio State in the after championship game. And then the exodus well and truly begin. So let's go through one by one who these coaches are and talk about what the significance of these moves is, right? Starting with offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian, who is now the head coach at the University of Texas. Can't wait for y'all to find out Steve Sarkeesian is married to L'Oreal Sarkeesian. That's going to be a great day for me because I'm always down with, well, that dynasty sign, my mama Delta. Shout out to Texas because I think y'all about to get live. All right, so like on top of that, running backs coach Charles Huff, who is now the head coach at Marshall, they got rid of Doc Holliday so that they could go get Charles Huff, who was the best recruiter in the entire country last year, and we saw it over and over again. Securing Kamara Wheaton was just the cherry to a very, very good recruiting class that he all put together. Tight ends coach and special teams coordinator Jeff Banks took the same position at Texas with a raise, also one of the best recruiters in the entire country. Offensive line coach Kyle Flood, yeah, he is now offensive coordinator at Texas. <laughs> yeah, was a head coach before, knows how to recruit, knows how to coach that offensive line, all right? Cornerbacks coach Carl Scott, now with the Minnesota Vikings, covered that a little bit before. Let's, let's remind you, right? Xavier McKinney, his. Patrick Sertain, his. His. Trayvon Diggs, his. And on down the line we go. Jordan Battle, his, right? Daniel Wright, we can keep going. Analyst Major Applewhite, now the Alabama, South Alabama offensive coordinator. People forget Major Applewhite was Nick Saban's first offensive coordinator. That's how whole old we are getting because many of us remember Major Applewhite at Texas losing his job to Vince Young, who is also on staff at Texas's athletic department right now, all right? Analyst Rob Ezell is now the South Alabama tight ends coach. Many people know Ezell as the guy who could mock Saban. And I mean that by like he did a really great Saban impression that used to really fire up his teammates. But he wouldn't do it in front of Saban because, well, he had a little too much respect for him. And I don't know too much respect. He had a great amount of respect for Saban that he didn't want to do that in front of him. And I appreciate that. Graduate assistant Andy Kwan is now the tight ends coach at Arkansas State. Analyst A.J. Milwee is now the quarterback's coach at Texas. Assistant strength coach Tyler Owens is now the Arizona head strength coach at <laughs> under Jed Fish, right? 
analyst Nick Perry is now the Atlanta Falcons assistant defense backs coach. Analyst Gordon Steele, yeah, Kevin Steele's kid, is now the South Alabama offensive line coach. Analyst Mike Stoops is now Florida Atlantic's defensive coordinator. And analyst Charlie Strong is now Jacksonville Jaguars assistant head coach and linebackers coach. That's 15 dudes off the staff that have gone elsewhere. Come through Nick Saban's rehabilitation clinic for coaches. Come out smelling like roses, right? We saw this with Lane Kiffin. And we've seen it all over the country, quite honestly, because in the SEC, I believe the only coach without ties to Nick Saban through like four degrees or more of separation is like Ed Orgeron, like maybe Gus Malzahn, but that's about it. Jimbo Fisher was on Saban's staff at one time, right? Lane Kiffin also on Saban's staff at one time. Mike Leach, we could probably get there. Because the man did coach it at Kentucky, and there have been so many assistants that have worked for Mike Leach. His coaching tree is also phenomenal. We could get there, right? But, like, you look around, you can see all these dudes have tentacles. Mark Stoops, he has ties, right? Like, it's, it's all over the place. But there are people that want to doubt Nick Saban at this particular juncture because he's lost so many assistants. To which, yo, man, we doubted Tom Brady at 43. The man won a Super Bowl. Now was the most talented football team in the playoffs for sure and the most talented team probably in the NFL last year, but he still won with it, right, which is something else entirely. Shout out to John Franklin III who got a Super Bowl ring. That's one of my favorite things about the winning Super Bowl team, just like the winning NBA Finals team. You find out about these dudes that you never thought would get rings that now have rings. Also, every player that scored in the Super Bowl for the Tampa Bay Bucks was not a Tampa Bay Buck last year. It's kind of phenomenal. Shout out to Rojo, Ronald Jones, who also got a ring. Man still can't catch, but don't matter. He was running that ball. He was toting that rock. All right. The other part about this that we need to drive home is Saban has been able to coach six national championship teams at Alabama and has seven national titles as a head coach. Same amount of rings Tom Brady has. Same amount of rings Robert Ory has. And he's been able to do this in an era where coach movement like this, unprecedented. Like we talk about the players and college football free agency and the transfer. We don't give near as much air as we should to how many coaches 100% are on the move. Nick Saban himself was called a nomad by other coaches, which is remarkable because coaching is a profession where you don't have roots. You just move. Saban has been able to recruit dudes to coach beneath him in his system without losing anything. That's remarkable. I don't know of any other coach that's been able to do that. I don't know of any other manager, CEO, that's been able to do that. Usually, we all know why somebody at the top is good. It's because the people around them in their immediate circle are very, very good, right? Saban's been able to recreate that for over a dozen years now and win six national championships with it. The machine that is Alabama football is Nick Saban, and that is why you don't get anywhere by doubting what Saban is going to do. If it doesn't pan out in a year in which you bet on Nick Saban, you won a bunch of other years when you bet on him. Everything does come to an end, all good things as they say, right? One day, Alabama will be a laughingstock again, but it doesn't seem to be anytime soon, as long as Nick Saban still wants to coach ball, and it seems like Nick Saban only wants to coach ball. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.